Good evening and welcome as people all over the country are joining together once again to solve some of Britain's most difficult and serious crimes. It all depends on you. And together we've, we've helped to unravel many of the country's most notorious cases over the years. And there have been seven more arrests since last month. We start with an extraordinary case, a double murder, or rather two separate murders, both of vulnerable people, both without apparent motive, and, as you'll see, they're linked by bizarre coincidence. They happened in January, by the seaside, in Hastings, in Sussex. Thinking about Claire since her death, my family have to face reality, whereas before, that side of life was a fiction. I think that the criminal and the victim are somehow drawn together. My daughter was looking for a companion and the criminal had his own ideas and they were brought together by some mysterious alchemy. And the criminal always chooses the weakest in society, just as a lioness will choose the wounded deer. Claire was not suited for the cut and thrust of ordinary life. She was too much of an innocent, you know. I had this plan in my head to try and rehabilitate her, if you like. I blame myself deeply for letting her drift on in her own sweet way. I used to arrive every Sunday because otherwise she did not have visitors. So I th felt I ought to make myself a visitor and a friend. Basically, I was taking her out because she'd mentioned that she was depressed. I think she felt the loneliness of it. In the basement, she was isolated from the rest of the community. And uh, I think that depressed her. Now then, where would you like to go? Each Sunday, they went shopping, and then Claire's father would take her for high tea. That day, they went to Littlewoods, where there's a cafe in the store. They got back to Claire's flat in Cornwallis Gardens around 5 p.m. Well, I'll see you next Sunday, weather permitting. Thanks for the tea. Bye. Bye. We both changed together. She was changing me and I was changing her. I felt really there was a warmth coming through and then it was stopped, which I very much regret. I was stopped in midair. About an hour and a half later, a jogger ran down Cornwallis Gardens. Was this you? Six feet tall, mid-twenties, with sandy blonde hair. Then, half an hour later, opposite Claire's flat. Well, I was going to pick up my boyfriend, and there's not normally many um, places to park the car, but luckily there was about three car spaces, so I just pulled in. And as I did, I saw a car um, in front of me, facing me, with its engine running and the lights on. It was similar to a red escort can't be sure and the headlights were square it makes me think that either somebody was sitting in the car waiting for somebody to come out of the flat or that they were maybe in a hurry and they were just nipping in to get something and come back out and that's why they left the car running with the lights on whose was this red saloon neighbors reported the fire at 7:15 Claire Letchford was found dead from smoke poisoning.
Then, a week later, detectives met the next victim. It's so terrible for someone to die in a house fire like that. Awful. Terrible. Could I just take your name and address in case we have to contact you later? Yes, of course. Thanks very much. It's Mrs. Beryl O'Connor, Dorney O'Connor, and it's 53 Clifton Court, Holmesdale Gardens. It's just over there. Fine. Thanks very much. Thanks for all your help. You're very welcome. Thank you. Here, uh, let me give you a hand. Oh, thanks very much. I'm just about to go and buy some ciggies. It was certainly ironic, but it was also very, very tragic. And we're talking about uh, another victim. Um, and then the following day, she herself becomes a victim. I've worked on several murder inquiries in my career. Certainly that has never happened to me before, and, and I hope that it never happens again. Known her for about six years. She was young at heart. She had so much to talk about, like, you know, interesting things she'd done in her life. Everyone just really took a shine to her because she was, I would say, lovely. Remarkable, really. Hello, David. Hello, Johnny. Now, let me take that for you. Thank you, dear. Sit yourself down. Thank you. How are you, anyway? Not too bad. The old bones are a bit creaky. Never mind. Uh, are you on a drink? It's whiskey, please. isn't it? Yes, please. Oh, whiskey, please, Barman. 20 to 9 next morning, Monday, January the 26th, just up the hill from Claire's flat, Dorney's home in Clifton Court. I've known her since we've been here, but not really got to know her world till her husband died. That was last June. And that's how I came to be doing the shopping for her, because I'd be going up the shop and if she, I said, well, give me a ring if you want anything, which she used to do. Here's your bread. Rose, what's that wet down there? Look, there's some more over there. It could be paw prints. No. If it had been water, I thought, well, it may be dried up or disappeared. So I was a bit worried. Come on. Let's go and check the rest of the flat. You just don't know who comes in and out. If it had been on my door, I don't know what I would have done. Um, that's why I was worried, because she's on her own up there. She couldn't you know, move quick. Her neighbour was so concerned that she checked on Dorney several times that Monday morning. She last spoke to her just before lunchtime. Thank you, Rose. Later, forensic analysis would find that the liquid at the entrance to the flat was mineral oil, possibly a lubricating oil. At 2.35 in a neighbouring block, a man was seen near the stairwell to Dorney's flat, He was slim and in his twenties with dark hair. Who was he? Five minutes later and just down the road, detectives were continuing their inquiries into Claire Letchford's death. Um, I didn't see her that much, uh, say, um, uh, on average about two or three times a month. Um, sometimes when she went past the window, I asked her to come in. She was like a lost sheep. Lonely sort. Not very good at looking after herself. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, hello, Dorney. No, I can't talk right now. Um, she seemed agitated. And I got the impression she wanted to get... get out of the flat, you know. OK. I'll see you in a minute. The day was so muddled up. What with the police coming to tell me about Claire and, and then dawn ringing, it completely went out of my head. When the police come for the second time and told me that Dawny was dead and I nearly passed out. There were two lovely, lovely, lonely people and now they won't be there anymore. 